Welcome back, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, today, we're going to be learning about interactions of matter with energy. This lesson is about interactions of matter and energy. So we're going to see how uh, matter is affected by energy and what kind of changes are going to happen to that matter. So we're going to go through a number of different ways that can that energy can change matter. So energy is the ability to make things. You guessed it, it's move. So energy makes things move. Energy has no mass, that's right, and no volume. So energy then is not matter. Um, it's kind of like the opposite of matter, not really, but that's kind of how we can sort of think of it. So heat is a form of energy because it does make things move when we uh, heat things up. So uh, you can think about basic example of like a hot air balloon. If you put hot air into that balloon, well, the balloon rises up. Um, in a in a car, well, the heat that's produced in the engine is so so much that it causes a piston to move around and make that car move. So uh, things things like heat uh, can always make things move. Uh, so we're going to look at how that will affect uh, matter in this lesson. Um, we're going to go further into that later on and we'll do some labs. I'll demonstrate some labs for you where you get to see what happens to matter uh, when we apply heat to it. So it's too bad you won't be able to do those labs because you're all at home, but um, you'll get to see how they worked. So matter plus heat is going to cause a change in matter and that's that's what we're going to see today. So the first type of change that we're going to look at is called a permanent heating effect or permanent heating change. What does this word permanent mean? You guessed it. That means that it stays the way it is after it changes. You can't change things back. So some things that might be permanent heating effects. What are some things that you could heat up and then uh, cool them down, but they wouldn't change back to what they were? Hopefully you thought of a few good examples. I can think of a couple here. So um, who's baked cookies before? If you're baking cookies, well, you start out with the batter uh, and uh, or the cookie dough, and, and then uh, you take that cookie dough, you put it in the oven, you heat it up, and you make some nice chocolatey chippity cookies. And after you're done with them, you could try and cool them down again and see if they'll turn back into cookie dough. But they won't. They'll just be cold cookies. So that's a permanent heating effect when something changes and you can't change it back to what it was. So uh, there's the definition of that. So if you remove the heat, it won't go back to what it was. So things like baking cookies or even cooking an egg, you start with a liquid egg, you heat it up, it, uh, you make scrambled eggs out of it, and uh, those eggs can't be cooled down back into the liquid egg anymore. So that's permanent heating effects. Things can't change back to what they were. Um, so that's a pretty basic one. The second type of changes that are going to happen is called a reversible heating effect. And that's the kind we're going to concentrate more on um, in our lessons that we do uh, about um, interactions of matter and energy. So there's three different categories of heating, reversible heating effects. And the first one is called a temperature change. So um, you can probably guess how that works. Well, some days you go outside and the temperature is really nice and warm. And then the next day, maybe it's not so warm anymore. So temperatures can change, but they don't always stay the way they are. So the temperature of something can go up and then it can go back to what it was once the heat is removed. So when heat is added, the temperature rises. And when heat is removed, the temperature falls. So another kind of basic one, but that one's reversible. Temperature can always go up and down. When heat's added, it'll go up. When it's heat is removed, it'll go down. Temperature is the result of how fast the particles of a substance are moving. The slower the particles move, the cooler the temperature. The faster the particles move, the warmer the temperature. The standard unit for temperature is degrees Celsius. Temperature is measured using a thermometer. A thermometer is a glass tube with a narrow inner column filled with colored liquid. The liquid expands when heated and rises up the inner column. It stops rising when it is the same temperature as its surroundings. 
the height of the liquid tells us the temperature of the substance. The outside of the thermometer is marked with lines. These lines are called the scale. The range of a thermometer is the number of degrees from the lowest number on the scale to the highest number. Each line is a division. Some thermometers have numbers corresponding with each line. Too many numbers make the thermometer difficult to read, so most thermometers only have numbers that correspond to some of the divisions. Okay, and the second type, and we'll uh, spend some time looking at this one in a lab, is called volume changes. So what's volume again? That's right, volume is the amount of space that something takes up. So when you heat things up, uh, we're going to see that it'll change the volume. It'll change the amount of space that something takes up. So adding heat causes matter to take up, what do you think, more or less space? That's right, it takes up more space. And as a scientist, we would say that when it takes up more space, when you heat it up, the volume gets bigger or expands, is the word we would use. So why do you think that happens? That's right, it's because of the way the particles um, change when they get heated up. So if you heat up particles, do they move farther apart or closer together? That's right, when you heat up particles, they move farther apart, and that allows the whole uh, thing, the whole matter, to get bigger. So if you heat up, um, I don't know, a piece of metal or something, well, that piece of metal is going to get larger overall because of that heat. It may, it may be just a little bit. You might no, not notice it a lot, but uh, it will actually get bigger. And an example of that would be uh, if you look at the telephone wires that you see hanging on poles, well, you may have noticed may have noticed that in the summertime they actually dip down more. In the wintertime, they're not quite as uh, droopy, um, and that's because when they get heated up, that metal that's in those wires actually expands, and then they droop down more in the summer. And in the winter, they're a lot more straight; they're not as as droopy because they've shrunk down. So removing heat causes matter to shrink. And the word we use in science is to, you guessed it, I hope, contract. So the matter will contract. It, the particles will get closer together when they're cooled down. The big idea here is that things expand. They get bigger when you heat them up. It doesn't matter if it's a solid, if it's a liquid, if it's a gas. They will expand. They will get bigger if you apply heat. We have heat and we have things, and I want to see if that's really true. So I have a metal rod. We're going to apply heat to that rod, and how do I tell if it gets bigger? Well, we set up a little gauge. All it is is a little needle, needle that the rod's setting on with a pointer, and then I have color-coded lines, and if that rod does get bigger, it's going to lengthen and push the needle. The needle's going to roll, and the pointer should move. Well, we'll see if science really works. So we need to apply the heat. I have the heat. We're going to fire this up, literally, and we're going to start heating this rod. When we heat the rod, you can't see it happening because it's microscopic on the small level. You can't see it with your eyes. The, the molecules inside are moving around faster and faster. More space, they're lengthening, spreading out, and that's why this rod should be, should be, getting longer and expanding. You might see this if you're observant, when you're driving in the car and the power lines, telephone lines, in the summer they sag because it's hot and the metal inside gets longer. In the winter, it cools down and it actually shortens up. They're not as loose. So, my meter should be moving and you should actually visibly see it moving as I really heat up the entire rod. It's such a simple demonstration but science really works. You can see it happening. I'm gonna stop, peek. The meter moved. Imagine that. Things actually expand and get bigger when you heat them up. They shrink and condense and get smaller when you cool them down. Science is amazing. Now our third type, our last type here, is changes of state. So uh, if you heat up matter, like if you heat it up, um, solid ice, for example, uh, it's, it's in a solid state. Well, if you heated it up to high enough temperature, what state of matter would it change to? 
that's right, it would change into a liquid. So uh, there's a number of different examples of ways that uh, things can change between the different states. What are the three states of matter that we normally think about on Earth? That's right, uh, solid, liquid, and gas. So we're going to look at how those three states of matter can change between each other. So we're going to look at those now, and we'll look at some examples. So uh, if enough heat is added to matter, it'll actually change state. So if you think about ice, do you remember what temperature we need to heat it up to in order to change it into a liquid? That's right, it has to go to zero degrees Celsius. Uh, and then if water needs to get into a gas, let's say, do you know what temperature it needs to get to in order to change into a gas? And I guess if you're going to boil it, that is, to, if you want to do it quickly. Yes, it would have to get to 100 degrees Celsius. Well, we're going to look at what all those different changes of state are called here. So when heat's removed from matter, then those different um, states will change back to their original state. So it is a reversible change as well. So the types of change of state are, the first one is called vaporization. And that happens when uh, a liquid is heated and changes into a gas. So um, it has to be heated up uh, for that liquid to change into a gas. So in this case, when you heat up that liquid, what happens to the particles? They start to move farther apart and, and they move a lot faster and that eventually allows them to get so far apart and they move so fast that they change into the next state, which is a gas. What's an example of vaporization that you could think of? Yeah, so if you had water and you put it on a stove and you heated it up, it would eventually get to a high enough temperature, to 100 degrees Celsius, and it would boil, and that would be uh, changing that water into a gas. So that's, that's vaporization. Okay, our next one is condensation, and that happens when a gas is changed to a liquid by removing heat. So it's like the opposite of vaporization. Um, an example of that would be if you never have a shower and the hot water turns into hot uh, water as a gas in the room, and then you get out of the shower and you notice, oh, my mirror is totally covered in water. Um, it's fogged up. Well, that's because the mirror is cold and that gas that was the water in the air is actually hit against that mirror and uh, condensed. It's gone straight back to a liquid. Um, so that's, that's condensation. With this example of condensation, we have ice and uh, water in a glass, and they both make the glass uh, material cold, and the water vapor that's in the air, that water is a gas, hits against the glass and the particles slow down, which turns them to a liquid, which forms that liquid water on the outside of the glass. There's such a high, high amount of water that it actually pools up on the table uh, in this example. And here's a little video the of the particles. The, the molecules move even faster. This process works in reverse, too. So this is showing the to water, particles water will changing to between the two different states. Okay, and the next one is called melting. And that happens when a solid becomes a liquid by adding heat. And uh, um, that, that happens, and it's happened recently. Um, we're glad all the snow has finally melted because it got hot enough. It got above zero degrees Celsius, um, which allowed all that snow to melt, that um, solid uh, water turning to liquid water. And eventually it all would evaporate too, or vaporize. Here's an example of melting, or the scientific name for that is actually fusion. Uh, with, uh, fu with melting or fusion, the particles of that solid ice are going slowly, and as they get heated up by the um, heat from the surroundings, the air and the container that the, um, the ice is in, uh, the particles start to move faster and farther apart, and eventually they'll turn completely into liquid water in this case. So they'll turn to a liquid. Okay, and the next one is called solidification. What do you think another word is for solidification? You're right, it's called uh, freezing. That's the common way of describing solidification. With this one, we've got a, a liquid that becomes a solid. 
okay, because we've removed heat. So uh, we're taking that liquid, the particles are getting closer together and slowing down because the heat is removed and it turns into a solid. Here's an example of that now. So these are the particles. Materials, water is made of molecules. In liquid form, these molecules move around quickly. As the temperature is lowered, the molecules slow down and bond to form a rigid structure. This is ice. That's dry ice sitting on the plate and it's very cold. Uh, when we take the water and pour it onto the dry ice, the particles of the water are going to slow down and turn straight to ice or uh, solid water. And that's called solidification. Now there's another uh, type change of state that we don't usually think about and this one is if you had a gas and it turned directly into a solid. Do you know what that's called? It's actually called deposition and it skips the step of being a liquid. Um, can you think of uh, when that might happen? Well with deposition uh, that can happen when uh, you have something like uh, um, water that's in the air as a gas and it hits against your cold window on a car, a cold window of a car and turns straight to solid ice. So when you get the frost forming on a car uh, on a cold uh, cold night um, and you're, you know, your parents might have to scrape the car window before you go out and drive in the car, well that's called deposition when that uh, gas hits that cold window on a winter's night and turns into solid ice. And our last one is the opposite of that, so it's a solid changing into a gas when heat is added. Uh, and that's called sublimation. So that can happen with things like, um, if you've ever seen uh, dry ice before, well dry ice is solid carbon dioxide and when you bring that solid carbon dioxide into the room it really wants to be a gas right away because in room temperatures uh, carbon dioxide is a gas so it'll it'll jump past that liquid stage there's no liquid carbon dioxide and it goes straight into a gas so that would be an example of sublimation Well, I hope you learned something there and we'll do some labs that will help you to learn about these different uh, permanent heating effects and uh, reversible heating effects. That was the interactions of uh, matter and energy and uh, hope you learned something. See you again soon. Bye everybody.